thousand double R. Everyone knows about it. Everyone's been talking about it for the last four or five months. You know, this is the bike. This is the bike you've got to ride. Everyone's asking me, Chops, when are you going to get on the new S thousand double R? Well, here we are. Only briefly, only for an hour, an hour's taste of this bike. But it should be enough for me to be able to tell, is this a game changer? So this is the standard version. This isn't the M Sport. This is the stock version. This is the 15 and a half thousand pound basic version, which I don't think BMW are going to sell many of these. I think most people see if they can get hold of them. Most people are going for the M Sport version which has the uh, the carbon wheels and all those extras. This is the basic one. But what, what Barnstorm has done, they fitted some forged wheels onto this anyway, just to make it a bit lighter. And it does, it does feel light to ride. So specs of these, I'm sure you're aware, these are around 195 kilos wet. So incredibly light. They're also 202 brake horsepower is what BMW lists them as, but independent dyno tests have proved them to be about 205, 206 brake horsepower at the back wheel in full standard trim. So it's an incredibly powerful motorcycle. It's absolutely bonkers, as you would imagine it would be. I almost wish this didn't have the forged wheels on it so I could see what it was like completely stock. Because with these on, it feels really nimble actually. Has this one got cruise control or is that an option? Yes it has. Bloody cruise control, that's what you want. Bang that on, enables you to rest your hands. I think it's an absolute must on a sports bike, bit of cruise control. Love that. The whole TFT is beautiful on this. It's got to be one of the best or if not the best TFT I've seen. I always say I prefer an analog rev counter to a to a TFT, but that that is how they should be. That is beautiful. The mirrors are quite vibey actually. I can't see much in those mirrors at all. Not that you really care about mirrors on a sports bike, but it's a little point to mention. I know TMF cares a lot about his mirrors, and uh, yeah, they're a little bit vibey. A little bit vibey if that's in, if that's your thing. <laughs> you would ever need on the road but it, that power is accessible it doesn't feel like it's too much you can't use it it wasn't wheeling too much I think the electronics must be very very good on this there's none of that wheel wheel coming up shut the power off wheel coming up shut the power off very smooth very controllable even when you're fully on the gas that is a surprise it's not so much power there that you can't use it. It's there, the electronics allow you to tap into it and use it. For bloody shifts. Let's try a fifth gear overtake at 60 miles an hour. Let's see how it pulls. Overtaking this car in front. This fellow BMW. Fifth gear, it's 57 mile an hour, full power. There's nothing wrong with that mid-range. If you go into the menus on here, sport might I mean I, I don't even know where to start. Sport, I mean what's this little thing do? Moves along. Navigation. It's got built-in navigation, which is a lovely touch. Well it looks like it's not enabled though, so you may have to pay to enable it. So much information in the in the in the menus, I can't even begin to go into that. <laughs> I've only got an hour on the bike. Suffice to say, there's enough there to keep you busy. <laughs> for a good couple of hours. It goes well. It's really easy to ride. That, you know, it, you can go quickly on it and it just feels super easy. Very controllable. It is quite vibey. As the revs go up, the vibrations increase which I guess is to be expected, but it is a little bit vibey. That would be one criticism of it. Does it feel quicker than the RSV4 1100 factory I borrowed? It, it doesn't feel as fast. Maybe it's because of the noise of that bike and the fact that you feel you're fighting it a little bit because it's trying to wheelie. I think this is just 
but this straight four engine is so smooth so powerful the electronics are so good at keeping under control i think it doesn't feel as fast as that 1100 factory but i've seen speed comparison testing and this is faster but i don't think it gives you quite the same thrill as the 1100 factory v4 does you know the straight four engines you can sometimes say they are a little bit boring a little bit soulless and i do get that bit i, I see what people mean i mean you cannot beat the, the noise and the theater of a v4 but this is so refined it's hard to say that it's soulless it's it it's the i think it is the pinnacle of the straight four engine that's now i think this really is the ultimate straight four sports bike there's not even that much weight on your wrists at all it's perfectly acceptable the comfort levels <laughs> much more so than my h2 that quick shifter so smooth same with the blipper it's not my gsxr beautifully smooth the thing about the s1000 double r's they all they always make make good road bikes because they have things like the cruise control the heated grips you know your sos but just those little options you get as a as a road bike they're not they're not sold as track machines they have the creature comforts i mean what is this button here something on oh, i've just turned something on i probably don't want on now Ooh, those brakes oh man they're incredible I'd love to take this on track because there is just an incredible amount of braking here. One thing which always worries me on track is braking. I don't feel that confident really stamping on them. But these, they're amazing. That suspension, I have to say, is very, very good. I've not noticed any imperfections in the road. I've not noticed getting jarred out in the seat. It feels very compliant and even when you're pushing on it feels lovely and sporty and firm these electronic systems are so good so so good electronic suspension as, a, as for a road bike i think is fantastic i've not noticed any crashing and these roads are terrible around here let's do a quick walk around we <laughs> nearly lost it on the leaves so there it is They've made a big effort with this bike, with the styling. I think it does look a lot better than the old version. Obviously the big change with it on this one, which everyone is talking about, is the new, now symmetrical headlights. Let's get them both in. It's a very pretty front end now. Um, I was never really that fond, certainly not of the original double R front end, but it's sort of a flat face and it's odd headlights. The second generation was better when it had the slight little beak. But this for me is by far the best looking double R. It's almost Ducati sort of look, especially in that red. I think that's probably why I wouldn't get the red one because <laughs> it does look very Ducati like. As I mentioned, this particular bike has the optional forged wheels, which look delicious. I don't know, they are, they're M Sport wheels. There must be a BMW op option for forged wheels. They look very nice, like them. These are the new calipers work fantastically uh, BMW branded but I think they're made by I can't remember the company they're made for but the company who makes them is actually owned by Brembo so still some Brembo involvement there other big changes is the new subframe it's got like this uh, trellis subframe just like oh that's hot I'm just looking at heat actually because these always have been bikes which run very hot that frame you could fry an egg on that that's actually too hot to touch the old fins, you know, you've still got that shark fin styling there. It's, it's a good looking bike. The other big change with these is there's no tail light. The tail light and brake light is all integrated and the indicator's in there as well. Let's put the indicator on. So it's all integrated. So when you're braking, you must not be able to see that indicator very well. I'm surprised that's even legal. Switch gear is nice quality i like the feel of all that very busy and there's a lot on here you've got the wheel as well 
for adjusting everything on the display and it tilts and moves and all sorts of going on with the switch gear but it's nice this one's got the sos button to calling bmw emergency services so that's this must have some extras on this bike i don't know if this is completely stock this has the heated grips and other stuff let's have a look at that display look at that it's the same display same physical tft which is on the new gs that we were using in Spain the other week, but obviously it's got a new layout. It's really, really nice. The, the, the display on this is fantastic. The best TFT I've ever used, I have to say. I would prefer that TFT over an analog rev counter setup. That's beautiful. Very, that's, that's how to implement a TFT. That's very nice. Other little styling things, you've got these little grills at the back, but the plastics do seem a little bit plasticky. I think you'd want to sort of swap this for sort of carbon, really, long term, because yeah, they're a little bit cheap looking and you know this stuff is a little bit cheap looking another thing with this bike is the new swinging arm they've used it's sort of an underslung swinging arm i used to love the all silver shiny swinging arm of the old bike it used to be one of the big key features for me that bike the swinging arm looked absolutely lovely i do quite like it but i think i wish they'd made it silver nowhere near as good looking as the old swinging arm i'll, I'll post up a picture of the old double r it's much nicer looking than that it was one of the best things about the bike that swinging arm looked absolutely delicious but overall i think they've done a damn fine job of updating the bike i love the new led headlights i mean those are led headlights at the front there little running lights this looks mean doesn't it the whole arc of that front fairing look it's it's a, it's a very good looking bike indicators are now integrated with the mirrors which is a nice touch cleans up the fairing nicely love it it's a very good looking bike i certainly wouldn't say no let's do an austin power style 30 point turn steering lock is pretty decent good steering lock ain't bad at all for a sports bike neutral second it's really tight bang it down from second first second little tap little tap first it's not easy to find neutral try and roll it forward a little bit oh my god normally you can go to second and tap down <laughs> that's really difficult it's because the because of the quick shift and the blipper there's like movement in the lever like a a set of bagginess a bit baggy the lever neutral there we go after the fifth or sixth attempt but that's great oh it's nice so there we go guys first little look at the rr hope you enjoyed that it's literally just an hour's first impressions first impressions it's all good how quickly you're up to speed without even giving it anything There's things to love about this bike the looks the ease of use the accessibility of the power the TFT, the kit you get, I know a lot of it is optional extras, but the kit which you could potentially get if you weren't willing to spend more money. It's just a lovely bike to ride. Bad things, pegs are high. I guess you could get some rear sets to lower those a bit if you wanted. It's a little bit vibey and it's extremely difficult to find neutral. <laughs> it could just be this bike. But I know the old double R was always a little bit tricky to find neutral as well. But uh, apart from those little finicky things, it's an absolute cracker. Massive thanks to Barnstormer BMW at Alton for lending me the bike for an hour or so. Let's appreciate you guys. I'll put a link below to Barnstormer. So if you want to test ride this, give me a ring. Take it for a test ride. I think you'll be impressed. See you later, guys. Neutral? Yay! We did it! <laughs>